Hey guys, this is one of the best affordable mini coolers on the market and this is made by Oster Hobby. But Oster Hobby just made a new one, but is this one as good as the other one? Let's find out! <laughs> So guys, in today's video we've got a brand new car to look at from Alstar Hobby. So recently from Alstar Hobby I reviewed this car. So this is one of the most capable 118 scale crawler cars for under 100 bucks. So this car has got the biggest motor that you've ever seen in a 118 scale car. Fully ball bearings, an extra mounted servo, a light kit and a lot more. So I will put the link down below to the review video of this car because this is a pretty awesome car. But now they have released a new car. So I'm curious to see if this one is as good as that one but first let me get everything out of the box and show you what's inside there Inside the box you will find the car, the transmitter, a 350mm 2S LiPo battery, a USB charger and some instructions. But let's have a close look at the transmitter first. So it runs on 4 AA's which you need to supply of your own. It's capable of one end driving, it's got a phone wheel and it's very sturdy. I really like the build quality of those transmitters. So we've got a couple of buttons, this is your on off switch, this is your steering dual rate, this is your third channel button, this is your steering trim or your throttle trim. And here you can reverse the channels and this is for the speed selector. But overall I really really like those transmitters and yeah the quality is just very nice. So let's have a closer look at the car. And here is the car guys, what do you think of the appearance? Well I really like the tough looking pickup style that they have created. So you've got three different color types to choose from and two body styles. I will put the link down below so you can check them out for yourself. And these will cost you around 50 bucks or something. So scale wise they advertise this car as being a 118 scale crawler car as you can see right over there. But this is a 124 scale, this is not a 118 scale. So this is a truly 118 as you can see. The same story for this one from FMS. So this is a 124 scale, just keep that in mind if you, try, if you want to buy this car. So let's have a closer look at the car now. In the front of the car you will find the front bumper with some fake lights and that's the same story with the roof lights right over there so these are all fake and you cannot fit LEDs afterwards and that's a bit of a downside but I really do like the roll cage on the back of this car. So the wheels and tires they look pretty nice and the rubber compound is a bit too hard or a bit too stiff in my opinion for the weight and the size of this car but the travel of the suspension is just amazing for a small car of this size just look at this guys it's got loads of travel i really like that in the rear of the car there is nothing special to see so there's no rear bumper there are no lights so this is a bit boring so when we turn the car around you can see the metal chassis rails is right over there so inside the pumpkins and inside this car you just have got bushings and plastic gears throughout so no bearings and no metal gears but you know you will pay 50 bucks or something for this little car so that's all fine so you can see the chassis mounted servo right over there and I think that is a metal gear servo and it's a three wire servo so that's a thumbs up it's not a fully metal geared servo it's like a 50 50 and that's a bit of a downside i really had high hopes that this was a full metal servo but it's like a 50 50 one so underneath the body you will find a very clean setup so here's the motor and the motor is mounted very down low in the chassis and that's already a thumbs up so over here's your gearbox and from the gearbox you will just have plastic drive shaft going to the front and the rear axle and this is your two in one receiver esc combination so this is a three channel receiver receiver and that's a big plus so over here you can see the third channel and over there is your light connector so if you want to do some modifications to this car that is possible and that's always a good thing so over here is your off switch and this is your battery compartment so the battery compartment is a bit of a downside so there's a little screw sitting right over there so if you want to place your battery you have to take the screw out place your battery and screw it back in so that's a bit of a downside and here you can see the servo but overall I really like the setup of this car so let me throw in some batteries and show you when it's on 
The car is powered on and the steering servo has got plenty of speed and plenty of power for the small car of this size so that's all fine but the steering angle isn't the best and already I can see that we can do a small modification to increase the steering angle so you can see a little notch sitting right over there so I am going to cut this little notch off and I'm going to mount this screw via the other way and then we will gain a little bit of a better steering angle so I'm going to do that before I'm going to take it out onto the course so power wise this is full speed at the high power setting and that's all okay so this is the low power setting and in the low power setting there is yeah, almost no torque but in the high power setting we've got plenty of torque so I think that's the preferred uh, setting but we will find out so there's only one thing left to do let's take it outside for a spin so guys we're on the test course and let's see how the new Austro Hobby performs. So the first obstacle that we're going to do is this big incline right over there. And if a crawler car is any good it should go all the way up this big boulder. So let's go. So you've got three power settings with this car and I put it into the second one. And here we go. No problem with this one. So let's go to the next obstacle. This is the second obstacle that we're going to do and there are some tricky bits in this incline. So let's see how this car performs. So I put it into the third power setting, so the most or the fastest one. Because yeah, low modulation with this car is a bit difficult. So yeah, it's a bit hard to control. Oh, I tipped it over. Let's try that again. So here we go again. So the modulation is a bit hard to control, but... Yeah, it goes up there without any problem. We've got plenty of traction, so that's not the problem. Here's another very steep boulder and only the most capable cars can go up this one because you've got a very steep incline, as you can see. And it's almost tipping over. Well, it tipped over, but let's give it one more go. Because I think this car probably can manage because there's a low center of gravity. This makes a chance of getting up here. And oh, here it goes almost. Yes, it did it. Now let's see how this car performs when driving on the slope. So the modulation isn't the best if you ask me. But it is what it is and I tried to do my best to keep it a bit stable and in a straight line. Yeah, here it goes. Well, oh, at the last moment I tipped it over. Let's do some rock rolling. Now let's see how this car performs when driving over some boulders. So it's still in the low power setting, but I think I have to... Yeah, so this is almost max power already. So let's put it into the second power setting and see if we can save it. Well, the reverse is a bit lacking of power. Oh, yeah, it's very hard to control. Let's try that again. Here we go again and let's see if we can do better than the last time. So the modulation is just too difficult. Just look at the throttle stick, you know, I just push the throttle stick and nothing happens. And it, when it goes over an obstacle it just jumps over it like it did just a minute ago. Here you see, it's not doing, yeah, here it goes and then it just grows straight forward. Yeah, it's not, uh, not my favorite until now. Let's go up again, so that's always the more difficult part, but let's see if we can manage. But controlling the throttle with this car is pretty difficult. Sometimes it doesn't have power at all. And the second moment it's just full power and just jumps over an obstacle. So, oh, 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 let's see if we can salvage it. And the reverse is it isn't very powerful, yeah. So controlling this car isn't... no, it's totally stuck. Yeah, full power, it doesn't do anything. Reversed, it doesn't have power enough, so... Here you can see the car driving around in the grass, and as you can see, it does a pretty good job doing that. So, yeah, this is more like a trail truck and not a real rock crawler, and that's all got to do with the modulation. So if the modulation was better, then this car would definitely be a pretty nice rock crawler, but it is just too hard to control. And therefore it's more like a trail truck, in my opinion, than a rock crawler. But still, it's fun to drive. But now I'll, I'll just give you some driving footage.
So guys, that was the driving with the new All-Star Mini Crawler. And what do I think of this little car? Well, appearance-wise, I really like this car. So the tough-looking pickup style that they have created, I really like that. But performance-wise, this isn't the best crawler on the market. But still, for the money, you will pay around 50 bucks for this little car. And you will have tons of fun driving this little car around. But it's not the best performer. But for the money, for 50 bucks, I cannot think of another car that is outperforming this car or is better than this car. So for the money, I think that this is a good buy. But there are a couple of things what I don't like about this car. And the main thing is the battery compartment. So to replace or, uh, yeah, to charge the battery or, or if you want to take it out, you have to remove this screw, take the battery out, charge it and re replace it again. And I think that's pretty annoying. Another thing what I really don't like is that you really can't fit LEDs in the light bucket. So if they just made a little change to that, that you can fit light yourself, I really would like that. But overall, nothing broke on me. I tumbled it around a couple of times and it performed not the best, but yeah, it did an okay job. And remember, you know, this is a pretty affordable car. So for the money, I think that this is a good buy. But if you want something better and a bit uh, bigger, just buy this one from Alsta Hobby. So I'll put the link down below to this review video because this is just an amazing car, especially for the money. All right, guys, that was it for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.